The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Do you have a mortgage on your home? The reason I ask is this. In about 14 minutes, our sponsor, the Equitable Life Assurance Society, is going to tell you about America's finest plan for home ownership. It's called the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan. Don't miss this important information. It's sure to save you worry. It may save you money. Tonight's FBI file, The Curious Cameraman. When you hear that there is an army of six million people in the United States today who have engaged in criminal activity, you're likely to think of them as being all the same kind of people. But that would be a mistake, because men and women become criminals for many different reasons. Some do it out of desperation and hunger, others because of passion or revenge. But one group of criminals, however, engage in crime as a business. They are likely to be shrewd and cunning and are the hardest to catch. This is because they plan their crimes well. And usually they all have one goal. Each one wants to commit the perfect crime. Tonight's FBI file opens in a car that is driving slowly through the factory district of a large eastern city. A man is seated behind the wheel. The girl is beside him reading a newspaper. Pete. Huh? Will we get to the track in time for the second race? I don't know. <laughs> There's a horse here called Paul's Dream. Gee, I gotta play him. It's a hunch for me. My sister used to go with a fellow named Paul. He was all the time having dreams. That sounds very scientific. What are you slowing down for? We're, uh, we're stopping here. Why? I'm going to take your picture. What? Sure. Let's get out, Ruth. Are you serious? Yes, yeah, sure. I've got my movie camera right here. Yeah, but what about the track? Don't you want to have your picture taken? Well, sure, but... All right, then just stand over there by that lamppost. Oh, <laughs> you do the silliest thing. It won't take long. Well, is it, uh, color film? No. Well, I'll fix my makeup first anyway. No, don't bother. Well, okay. Pete, are you taking the picture from there? Yep. With that half-finished building in the background? Uh-huh. Well, look, couldn't I stand in front of something better than that? No, just stay right where you are. Okay. Uh, you taking it now? Mm-hmm. Well, um, should I, uh, wave at something like this? Fine, honey. Well, uh, how about if, um, if I was to... Well, maybe blow kisses, huh? Great. Now I'll spin around. Uh, open my coat. Terrific. Well, Pete, I can't think of anything else. Oh, you're doing swell, honey. Just, uh, <laughs> just hold it there another few seconds. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's it. All over? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, when will they be developed, Pete? Oh, next week. I'm dying to see them. I hope they turn out good. Well, I, uh, I got some news for you, honey. Huh? You're not even in them. We have another drink, Marty? Uh, no, thanks. How about you, Lee? I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Ruth, what's with Pete? What's he doing? Oh, he's fixing up something in the next room. Well, what's the stall? I thought he asked us here to talk about a job. He did. Well, where's the action? Well, he just... Hiya, went... fellas. Oh, hi, uh, Pete. Hey, uh, come on in here, huh? Okay. Me too, Pete. Yeah, sure. Yeah, come go in. ahead, Ruth. Thanks. What goes in here? I want to show you guys something. Hey, what's that thing? It's a movie projector. Huh? I'm going to show you some pictures. What is this? I thought we came here to talk business. This is part of the business. 
Put out the lights, Ruthie. Oh, sure. Uh, are these the ones you took last week, Pete? The ones I'm not in? Yeah, yeah. Now, let me give you a short rundown here first. This is a job I've been casing for the last four weeks. It's a payroll job. I want you to watch it closely, fellas. All right. Now, this first picture is an alleyway. The construction job on the right is a big factory that's being put up. I took a picture of the alley because that's where we're going to park the getaway car. You'll be driving, Lee. Okay. Now, this view is the whole building. And you see that little shack? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's where they handle the payroll. That line of guys there now are getting paid off. There's one guard on the job. On payday, which is Friday, that line forms at 11.30 sharp. Now, the guard starts at the shack and works down the line checking badges. I got two badges. You'll be wearing one, Marty. Huh? I'll wear the other. Oh, okay. Next Friday, we'll be at the head of that line. A whistle blows when they start paying off. Lee? Yeah? When you hear the whistle, you move the car out of the alley and start slowly down the street. Right. By that time, we'll be in the shack. You park behind that pile of bricks, that'll give us cover. By the time you're there, Marty and I will have knocked off the payroll. We'll hop out and join you in the car. Well, that's the story, boys. Oh, that sounds real good, Pete. Yeah, it'll work. How big is the payroll? Around 30000 wow. Hey. Now, I'll run it over again, fellas, so you'll remember it good. Wait, look. Huh? There I am. I'm in the picture after all. This is okay, Pete. Right at the head of the line. I told you we would be... Only two guys in the shack. I know. Well, this is it. Right. All right, you guys, come ahead. Let's go. Okay. All right, boys. Come ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, Summers, sir. Badge number. Never mind that, you. This is a stick-up. Huh? Cover the Marty. Uh, right. Give me them envelopes. Slap in this bag. Look here, you... Shut up, you. How you doing? Okay. Anybody help outside? No, not yet. Give me that bundle, too, mister. All right, here. Nearly done? Yeah. Yeah, this does it. Now, listen to me, both of you guys. Keep your trap shut until we're out of here. Do you hear me? Okay. okay. Now, let's go. Around this pile of bricks, Marty. Is that car there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything okay? Yeah, get going. Any trouble? No, it was a breeze. I'll cover the back. Okay. Here, Marty. Hold the money back there. Uh, all right. Uh, right. How much you get? The works. Uh, the payroll guy's just coming out in the Lee. street. Lee! Has... Lee, look out for that cab. He's making a left in front of you. Yeah. Well, do something. Swing your wheel. Look <laughs> out! <laughs> Oh, you stupid jerk. You okay, Pete? Yeah, we got to get out of this heat. Oh, wait, fellas, my leg. Hey, look, there's a cop in the corner there. Let's blow. Don't leave me. We're all on our own. Meet back at my apartment. Pete, the cop's pulling his gun. Yeah, scatter. Wait, you guys, wait. Several miles from the scene of the stick-up, at an FBI field office, Special Agent Jim Taylor is just giving a report on this daring job to a fellow agent. It looked as if they were going to get away clean until a cab accidentally cut in front of a getaway car, Dan, and the two cars crashed. The stick-up men abandoned theirs and made a run for it. Mm, this was just a block from the scene of the stick-up? That's right. And what happened then, Jim? Well, there was a policeman on the corner. He called out to the men, ordered them to halt, and when they didn't, he fired upon them. Any results? He killed one of them, and he believes that he wounded another. The second man, however, still made a getaway along with the third. Yeah. Uh, how about the money? Unfortunately, one of the two men who escaped still has it. Mm. How do we come into the case, Jim? Oh, the car that was used had out-of-state license plates. It was from Illinois. That gives us a basis to help the local authorities. Incidentally, a checkup revealed that the car had also been stolen. I see. It was the driver of the car who was killed. Well, any identification on him? I don't know, Dan. The body was taken down to the morgue. I'm going down there now to pick up his fingerprints and check over his effects. I'll contact you as soon as I return. Who is it? Me, Marty. Oh, 
Well, just, just a minute. Let me in. You alone? Yeah. Well, where's Lee and Pete? I don't know. What do you mean? What happened? Just let me sit down. Where are they, Marty? Huh. Where are they? We all scattered. We, we're all supposed to meet back here. I don't think Lee will make it. Why not? He got shot. <gasps> Bad. Last I seen of him, he was stretched out in the street. What about Pete? He got away okay. Did the job go bad? No, that worked okay. After we got the dough pulling away, we ran into a cab. Oh. Cops seen us. When we made a break, he started shooting. Help me get my coat off. Will you? What's wrong with you? I got hit, too. Oh, Marty. Where? Here in the chest. Pull that sleeve. Oh, gee, you're bleeding bad, huh? Yeah, kind of. We better call a doctor or something. No, no dice. Well, look, if you... Now, just help me in the bedroom. Let me lay down a while. Sure, Marty. Here, just lean on me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah that's fine. Hmm. What about the money? Oh, we got that okay. Has Pete got it? No, I took it. I stashed it away. I didn't want to carry it around. Oh. How'd you get here, bleeding like that? Well, it, it didn't start to get bad till just before I got here. Let me lay down here, huh? Oh, sure. There, there you are. Well, I'll go get some towels and stuff and fix you up. Jim, did you go to the morgue? Yeah, I just came from there. And? The police have been working. They contacted the Illinois State Police, gave them a complete description of the man who was killed. Yeah? They seem to think it was a man named Lee Perry. He had a long criminal record, and I got a set of his fingerprints and sent them on to the Bureau in Washington. I see. Uh, did the Illinois police have any idea who Perry's associates might be here? No, Dan, they didn't. They're checking on that now, though. Uh, how about the paymaster at the construction job? Hmm? Was he able to identify the other two hold-up men? Oh, he's down at headquarters now looking over pictures. He didn't remember them very well, though, so that may not lead to anything. Hmm. Uh, was there anything found on Perry that might help? The only thing that might be important is a note. I have it here. Huh? It reads, go to Ruth's apartment on 12th Street. Pick her up and have her bring the movie projector to my place. Any signature? No, but this note is written on the back of an envelope which originally contained snapshots, eh? Ah. It's from the Argosy camera shop. Oh, they're down on Spring Street. Yeah, I know, Dan. This envelope has a number on it. I'm going over to the camera shop now and see if they have any record of the name of the person these pictures were developed for. Marty. Little boy. Blue suit. Always wears a blue suit. Marty. Don't, don't try it now. Marty. Huh? Why? D don't you think I should get a doctor? Send a little boy up and down, up and down, race you to the Marty, corner. Marty, will you listen to me? Mm -hmm. You need a doctor uh, real bad. Oh, 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 water. Get me some water, huh? Water. Sure, sure, Marty, sure. I'll be right back. Everybody can swim but me. All the guys. <gasps> Who is it? Pete, Pete. Oh. Oh, Pete, oh. I'm so glad to see you. Anybody get here? Yeah, Marty. Where is he? He's in the bedroom. Oh, oh he's in bad shape, Pete. He got shot, see, and he's bleeding real Never bad. mind that. Never mind that. Did he bring the dough? No, he didn't. What? What happened to it? He said he stashed it away. He, he didn't want to carry it around. I got to go talk to him. I'll get him a glass of water. He's been saying right along how thirsty he is, and I was just going to get him... Ruth! Yeah? What is it? Where, uh, where did Marty stash that dough? I don't know. Didn't you ask him? No. Oh, you blubberhead! Look, ask him yourself! I can't, stupid! But... He's dead. <laughs> Tonight's case from the official FBI files will be reopened in just a moment. My house is not the largest in the world, not the finest, not the most luxurious, but it's a good place to live in, the place I love the best. It's my home. You're the kind of man, you who think a lot of your home, 
that the Equitable Life Assurance Society had in mind when it created its famous assured home ownership plan. It's a money saver. It's a home saver. It's America's finest plan for home ownership. Sounds good to me so far. Let's hear more. Well, this Equitable Assured Home Ownership Plan has four main advantages. First, if the owner dies, the Equitable Society cancels the mortgage. It's paid off in full. What's more, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned to the widow along with the canceled mortgage. Second, during the owner's lifetime, a special cash fund is built up in this plan, ready for use if sickness or unemployment threaten home security. Third, as your mortgage shrinks, the cash fund increases. You can use it to pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in approximately 14 years. Fourth, mortgage interest is only 4%, and there is a liberal allowance to help cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. You mean it? Interest only 4%? Yes, and it's a true 4% rate, because interest charges go down every month. All in all, a man is mighty lucky if his health, age, income, and the location of his home qualify him for an equitable, assured home ownership plan. Well, how can I find out if I qualify, Mr. Keating? Ask your Equitable Society representative. Get full information on the plan that protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. Look in the phone book or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to the FBI file, The Curious Cameraman. Tonight's case from the files of your FBI proves that no matter how carefully a crime is planned, there is always some unlooked-for incident that throws all previous calculations into discard. For example, the unforeseen automobile accident which resulted in the death of two of the conspirators. There was no margin for error in the master scheme, and when the accident occurred, the chain was broken and panic replaced planning. Once again, it had been proven that there is no such thing as the perfect crime. Tonight's file continues at Pete Warren's apartment. He is pacing the living room floor. The girl, Ruth, sits dejectedly on the sofa. Oh, weeks I spend on this job. Weeks. And what have I got to show for it? A great big hunk of nothing. I'm awfully sorry, Pete. Oh, look, instead of being sorry, if you just had brains enough to ask the guy where he stashed the dough, a five-year-old child would have done that. But you always told me not to ask questions. Shut up. But you did, Pete. Shut up, but... I said. I'm trying to think. Not having the dough ain't our only problem. What do you mean? Well, I don't know how bad off Lee was. He might be singing to the cops right now. Oh. And that ain't all. We got a stiff in the bedroom. A dead body we got to get rid of. What do we do with him? Well, let me... Think. I'm not asking you! Okay. Oh, give me a cigarette, will you? Gee, I, I don't think I have any. Oh, wait, I'll look in Marty's jacket. Got to figure some way to blow town. I better get a hold of some cash in a hurry. No, no cigarettes in his pocket. Nothing but this claim check. Oh, for the... What? This, here. It's a baggage check. Let me see that. Sure, here. This is from the railroad station. There's a time stamp on it. Hey. What? He checked something this afternoon. Honey, huh? this is where he stashed the dough. Dan, Dan, over here. Right. Did you pick up that search warrant for me? Yes, I have it right here. Well, let's go inside. Now, what's this all about, Jim? Well, I went over to the camera shop and had them check the number on that envelope. Then, Go ahead, Dan. All right. The camera shop said that the films were left there by a man named Warren. He lives at this address. Oh, I see. Uh, we go up one flight. Okay. I arrived here, but there was no answer at Warren's apartment. The superintendent gave me a key. So I've been waiting for you with that warrant. Oh, 
Well, do you think Warren was one of the stick-up men? Well, according to the superintendent, he answers to the general description. Um, it's this apartment right over here. Okay. Camera people said he was a regular customer, that they did an awful lot of work for him. I see. Here we are. Go ahead, then. Thanks. Well, let's take a look around, huh? Right. Well, look here. What? This movie projector. Imagine it's the one that was mentioned in the note, and there's a whole stack of movie film here, too. Jim. I... Look huh? at this. What is it? Jacket. Pretty well soaked with blood. Hmm. And there appears to be a bullet hole in it, too. Dan, looks like this was a good lead. Let's search the rest of the rooms. Okay. Uh, let's try this one first, huh? This appears to be the... Look, Dan. Yes, I see him. Even from here, I'd say he was dead. Mm. Do you think this is Warren? No. No, he looks nothing like the description. This must be the one who was wounded. Dan, we'd better call the police at once. Right. And uh, suppose you wait here for them. I doubt that the money is here, but they can search for it. Okay, Jim. I'm going to take these rolls of film back to the office. I want to see what's so important about them that they needed a projector. <laughs> Yes, come in. Well, how are the movies going, Jim? Oh, Dan, you're just in time. Uh, snap that light off, will you? Sure. This is the reel I want you to see. Okay. Well, these pictures are where the stick-up took place. Oh. You mean this is the way they cased the job? Evidently, yes. See, that's the construction job there. Pretty clever of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah. there was no trace of the money at the apartment. I didn't think there would be. One of the men from Homicide identified the body. Oh? A man named Marty Stone. He'd been involved in another holdup several years ago. I see. Uh, is that all there is to this, Jim? The scene of the crime? No, there's something coming up right now that should be very helpful. Uh, Here it is. Oh, that girl? Opening up her coat? That's it. She has to be a friend of Warren's, Dan. So I'm having a blow-up made of her. There might be something she's wearing that'll give us a lead on where to pick her up. And if we find her, we might find Warren. See? I'm over here. Okay. You, you got the money, huh? Yeah, yeah. I thought you said it was in a canvas bag. It was. Well, where'd you get that suitcase? I bought it in a luggage shop. The canvas bag was a dead giveaway. Oh. So let's get going. Where? To get some tickets. We're blowing out of here, honey. Now? Right now. Oh, Pete, we can't. Huh? Why not? I gotta go back to my apartment and pack. Oh, no good. But I haven't any clothes. I'll buy you some new ones. Look, there's a mink coat there, and I'm not leaving it. Honey, we can't take the a chance. A mink coat's a mink coat. You can buy the tickets, take me home, then we'll get a train. What's happening, Jim? I just got the enlargements on that girl. Here they are. They lead to anything? Yes, I found out that she's the one who was mentioned in that note. Ruth? That's right. Look, she has a lapel pin there. R-U-T-H, see it? Oh, yes. I found something else here, too, but... I'm a little puzzled by it. Oh, what is it? Well, as you can see, she's holding her coat open. How many times, you know, women have their name written on the inside lining? Well, there is something on the lining. Yes, but it isn't writing. It's a couple of bars of music. Let me look at it. Here, take this magnifying glass. Help okay. Me. Dan, can you read music? Yeah. Well, is there any melody there? Yeah. Uh, it goes... Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. That's the melody. Sounds familiar. Hum it again, huh? Hey, wait a minute. That's an old song called Sweet Lorraine. That's right. Dan, her last name could be Lorraine, and that note said she lived on 12th Street. Come on, let's get busy. Aren't you finished packing yet? These are the last things. There. That's all. Well, close that bag and let's get out of here. Okay. 
Now, come on, come Wait on. Wait a minute. Oh, what now? My coat. I almost forgot my coat. Well, honey, hurry it up, will you? Okay. What time does the train leave? In a half an hour. Oh, there. Now I'm ready. Good, good. I forgot to ask, where are we going? West. Where west? California. Oh, wonderful. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Just a minute. Huh? Huh? Are you Ruth Lorraine? Yeah. Why? Well, then you must be Pete Warren. Who are you? We're special agents of the FBI. Oh. Look out, Jim! Oh! Now, when he comes to, miss, we'd like to talk to you both about some pictures. Pete Warren was convicted in a federal court for violation of the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act and sentenced to serve a five-year term. He was then turned over to the local authorities for prosecution on robbery charges. The conviction of the two criminals in tonight's case makes you stop and wonder why two such people never learned the futility of crime for profit. That such a career is futile is proven again by the fact that prisons all over the nation are full to the point of being overcrowded. And yet criminals will not learn. They continue to try to commit that perfect crime. But they will not succeed so long as there are law enforcement agencies on the job. Law enforcement agencies like your FBI. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Mr. Keating, the more I think about that assured home ownership plan, the more interested I am to find out if I qualify. You're right, Ed, because look what you get in one package from the Equitable Society. A mortgage that's paid in full if the owner dies. If not, a cash fund to be used in financial emergencies. And mortgage interest at only 4%. No wonder it's called America's finest plan for home ownership. So don't delay. See your equitable representative soon. Or write to the Equitable Society care of this station. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Horoscope Homicide. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Jim Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Horoscope Homicide on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.